Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi, my name's Ava and I'm a mortgage power planner. Now in today's video, I wanna discuss buying properties at auction. And the reason for that is because a lot of people are now considering buying at auction because you can get some absolute steals. So why not consider it? But the reason most people end up not going for it is because they don't actually understand how to fund it properly and they're scared in case things go wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through what you need to do before the auction and what you need to do after and also what your options are if your mortgage application gets declined last minute so make sure you watch until the end to find out but before we jump into the video if you could hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel down below that would be greatly appreciated right let's jump right in So in my opinion, there are five things you should do before the auction. So before you even consider going to one and purchasing the property from one. So the first thing you should do is to actually research the auction house that you're gonna be buying through, just to make sure you understand all the rules and terms and conditions so that there's no nasty surprises on the actual day. It also helps you to figure out how they operate and what the style is and how to bid, because personally, I've never been to an auction, so I wouldn't even know where to start. That's why researching the place before you actually go to one is vital. Now the second thing is to have your deposit ready and the reason for that is if you're successful at the auction, if you end up purchasing a house, you will be required to put down a 10% deposit of obviously the purchase price so you need to have that ready with you on the day, you need to have that money readily available. The third thing is to have a budget in mind. So when you go to an auction, you will need to have some sort of final figure in your mind so let's say you can afford a maximum of a hundred thousand pounds that's your budget so do not go above that unless you can afford it but setting that budget at the outset keeps you grounded so you don't kind of get ahead of yourself and end up bidding for something that you can't actually afford so that's why it's very very important that you go in there prepared and you know the maximum amount you can actually spend and don't be afraid to come out of it with no property because auctions happen all the time and if you don't get successful at this one there's always the next one so don't feel pressured to actually buy at the first auction you attend the fourth thing and probably one of the most important ones and once again i know i'm biased but you need to consult an independent mortgage advisor before you go to an auction and the reason for that is because they need to obtain a decision in principle for you they need to know that you can actually get the mortgage before you end up winning the property now the main reason for that is because banks tend to take quite a long time time to process your application especially now during covid the time scales have increased dramatically so it does take a longer amount of time whereas when you purchase a house at auction you only have 28 days to actually complete on that purchase now don't get me wrong a lot of the auction houses will give you a slight extension if they know that you definitely have a mortgage agreed but if you're only just starting the process after you've bought the property it is very very unlikely that you're complete in time and that will end up costing you the 10% non-refundable deposit and that is the last thing you want so consult a mortgage advisor and provide them with all the relevant information so they'll probably ask for the likes of your pay slips bank statements etc etc I've got some videos about mortgages and what you'll need to provide your mortgage advisor with but ultimately make sure you obtain that decision in principle based on your maximum budget so the maximum amount that you can actually spend that you know you can afford to spend base your decision in principle on that amount and just a little all, I guess a disclaimer on this one a decision in principle doesn't actually guarantee that you'll get the mortgage it is all subject to final acceptance terms so the property that you are buying at auction the lender needs to be happy with that property so if for example you get an absolute bargain at 40 grand but the property is deemed unhabitable a lot of mainstream lenders will not lend on that property so even though you've obtained a decision in principle they'll still decline your mortgage offer so just bear that in mind which actually brings me nicely on to my final thing to do before going to auction and that's to consult a solicitor what you'll normally have at an auction is you'll have the legal pack ready for the property that you're looking to buy so all the searches will have been done now you need to take this to your solicitor for them to have a look through it to ensure there's no restrictive covenants within the documentation to make sure that there's no nasty surprises this will also help to protect you against any 
anything going wrong further down the line. So once you've got that information, you can take that to your mortgage advisor and tell them there either are some restrictive covenants or it's clear, it's good to go. And either way, the mortgage advisor can then look at various lenders to be able to provide you with the right solution. And just because there are certain restrictive covenants doesn't mean that you won't be able to secure a mortgage. There's a lot more that goes into it and there are some specialist lenders that will lend on quirky things. So don't let that put you off. Always consult your mortgage advisor first and they'll be able to tell you what your chances realistically are. Right, so you're at the auction and your bid is the winning bid. So you managed to purchase that property that you wanted. What should you actually do next? Straight off, you should contact your solicitor and your mortgage advisor to make them aware that you have secured the property. So they can start doing things on their ends in order to pull everything together for you. Second of all, you'll obviously have to pay the 10% deposit. So make sure once again that you are prepared for it. And thirdly, when you're speaking to your mortgage advisor, tell them to apply for the mortgage to make sure that that's all getting sorted in the background. They normally can't actually apply for the mortgage until they know the final purchase price so just make sure you pass all of those details on to them but that's about it so now it's just a case of waiting for everything to come together and for you to grab the keys right okay but what happens if the mortgage gets declined after you've purchased the property because trust me that can actually happen and I've seen it happen a few times so you need to be prepared for that eventuality and here's how so you're probably thinking well I'll just go to another lender and get another mortgage approved now now that would work in normal circumstances if you were to buy a property normally through a private seller. However, when it comes to auction, as I mentioned before, you are very time limited. So applying to a new lender may not work in the short amount of time that you've actually got. But there is an alternative. But before I discuss the alternative, I do have to pop a disclaimer in to say that for one, this isn't financial advice or mortgage advice or anything like that. Number two, it does depend on your personal circumstances circumstances whether this is the right solution for you so always consult your mortgage advisor about it first and thirdly this is an expensive short-term solution so only use it if it's your last resort so the solution I'm talking about is using a bridging loan now a bridging loan is basically a short-term secured loan that allows you to for example purchase that house in the time frame that you've got rather than waiting for a standard lender to do what they need to do so bridging loans specialists tend to be a lot more flexible and I guess almost lenient with the requirements because of the short term nature of the loan. So when I say short term, I mean less than 12 months. So it's very rare for a bridging loan to last more than 12 months. And ideally in this scenario, you're only looking for the bridging loan to be in place for a maximum of kind of two to three months, depending on how fast you can get alternative funding. But the main thing with the bridging loan is the exit strategy, which in this case would be obtaining a standard mortgage with a different lender. Now I won't go into too much detail on bridging loans as I will create a, a whole separate video on that to give you guys more information about it. However, the things you need to know are the fact that a bridging loan will most likely be on an interest only basis where the interest is actually charged on a monthly basis. So it will cost you quite a lot of interest. So bear that in mind and make sure you are prepared for it. As well as that, the initial fees tend to be quite high. So once again, make sure you've got that extra cash spare should you need to utilize this solution but as always your mortgage advisor will actually be able to advise you on that and tell you what you should actually do in that situation but a bridging loan is definitely an option worth considering so this is it for today's video guys i hope it's given you some more clarity when considering buying an auction as always if you have any questions please pop them in the comment section down below or alternatively you can email me all my contacts contact details are in the description box down below so feel free to use them but ultimately I'm keen to know if you are going to buy an auction or whether you've already bought an auction and what your experience was so let me know in the comments section and with that being said if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below as it really supports my channel thank you for watching and I'll see you guys back on Friday with a brand new video bye guys